everybody. Welcome to Bish's RV. We're here today at our Southern Michigan, Coldwater Michigan RV Super Center with the uh, Wildwood or Salem, two different names for the same RV, 23 BHHL. This is literally, basically, if they just took their 22 rear bath couples model and slapped some bunks in there. It is slightly longer, but that's the thing. They really nailed some serious marks on this one. It comes in just over 5,800 pounds. It's about a 7,500 pound maximum weight, so it should fit nicely within the realm of most half ton tow ability, especially considering the wide stance uh, stability axles and a tip to tail maximum measurement of 30 feet. So this is something that is not too long that might squeeze into some of those state and national parks. It doesn't feel too big behind you. We've got an enclosed heated belly with 12 volt tank heaters on all the holding tanks, private front bedroom, uh, big uh, double double bunk in the rear uh, right by the door. Um, and there's a little camp kitchen below that that is surprisingly nicely equipped. I actually really like how they did that. Now it's got a couple little hangups like the RV doesn't have a ladder, but fair points like that are things I'm going to cover as we go here. And if you appreciate that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. This thing for a small uh, rig this size, it has surprisingly good storage. We're seeing it outfitted with a U-Dinette today, but there's some other different seating swaptions that you could apply to it. I, I would love to hear though what you think about that as we go. And as we, you know, actually right there, um, uh, as we go through this RV, let me know the things you like about it and what things would you change given the opportunity. I'm going to do my best to point out all those, you know, little nooks and crannies so that you can make an educated decision with your hard earned dollar. So giving you a little bit of the lay of the land here, we're actually like, if you walked out of the bedroom in the morning and looked toward the back of the RV, that's what we're looking at right now. And as I mentioned, we're looking at the U-Dinette today. I do believe there are some seating swaptions available in this, considering the non-bunkhouse version of essentially the same floor plan uh, has various sofas that are available, either high to bed or theater. Now, if, uh, you know, you're looking at this and saying, well, I mean, you know, I'm straight across to the entertainment center, but that, that dinette's kind of stupid. Who's going to want to sit at a dinette all day? I don't know that this is an RV that is designed with the idea of sitting at the dinette all day. I think that this is a very function space. I think that this RV has enough entertainment capacity to get you through a rainy day, but it is otherwise really intended for spending some time outside under a pretty good sized patio awning uh, or, you know, hanging out by the uh, outdoor camp kitchen. Both bunks have a window that does open for airflow. They call this a double bunk. I don't have my tape measure on me. I apologize. I don't know the exact measurements. This is not quite as wide as some of the other bunks that I've seen, but it's also not the worst. Interestingly, the bottom bunk also has a set of household outlets, which is kind of interesting. Um, one of our eagle-eyed viewers also noticed this the other day. Said, Josh, did I see an auto detect sticker on that converter there? And the answer is yes. More and more RVs, uh, you know, since some people are looking for uh, different types of batteries and whatnot, looking for, you know, lead acid or AGM or, or lithium or something like that, RVs are being built with a little bit smarter components to help us out there. Now, I'm a little bit out of order, but as long as I'm looking at over here and we're cyber stalking the service team cruising through, let's actually close those blackout roller shades and we're, let's take a look at all the, like, you know, the, the, the blinds, the storage, all kinds of stuff here. The standard default on this is the 12 volt DC compressor fridge that we're seeing here today. It's uh, between 10 and 11 cubic foot and it is very fast cooling. It's also totally travel safe because it operates just off the battery in transit. Um, it is also a, a much faster cooling. Did I say that? I don't know. Anyway, but there is an eight cubic foot gas electric swaption available if you are looking for that two way function. By default, the RV does not have any sort of factory solar package. But that stuff is available. I think it's only about a 100 watt package. But if you need something a little heavier and a little more robust, um, that's the kind of thing that we can assist you with here at Bish's RV. The problem with solar, it's very cool. And it's like magic. It's, it's, it's <laughs> solar power turns into lightning. Like it, it's wild, right? It seems like magic to me. But it's not one size fits all. Solar is what size fits you. So if this solar package doesn't work for you, well, I mean, right now we have zero solar, but if the factory 100 watt battery tending package doesn't work, we could build you just about anything that could fit on this RV, <laughs> you know, as long as you're willing to pay for it. There is always that caveat right there. <laughs> a little bunion burner down below. It's a, it's a bit of an ankle uh, baker, I suppose, depending on where you're standing on that thing. And you may notice cabinet side ducted heating instead of uh, four ducted heating. Maybe a little bit less efficient, but this is also not a large floor plan, so it's not like we need maximum efficiency in here. It just makes this a little bit easier cleaning. You may have noticed that big drawer below the oven and a dead... I, 
What they did under that sink to me is perfect. They had a wastebasket storage space on one side. They had shelf storage space on the other for your dish soaps and whatnot. That is perfect execution. And they were smart. They actually utilized this front wall right here uh, for power outlets because the side wall is laminated. But this front wall is not. So they were able to put an appliance outlet in the perfect position down low where we can actually get to it. Now, this isn't as obvious. Let me get that out of the way. That is a farm sink, uh, by the way. Little things, too, like the digital thermostat as compared to the old dinosaur variety. Just nice little touches that Wildwood in general is doing here so that, you know, we don't necessarily uh, have to replace stuff after the fact. This is six and a half foot tall, but that skylight does open things up. And by default, we have a 13,500 BTU air in this one uh, th that could be upgraded to a 15,000. I'd be surprised if we have many of these in stock without that feature. Now, you may have noticed in our quick flyby kitchen footage there that we do have that sliding pocket privacy door. One of the nice things here is it's got a little magnet plate to keep that shut so you can maintain some pri- Oh my lord. Oh my. Now, don't get me wrong. I got skinny fingers and chicken arms. Okay. But um, that magnet ain't letting go. So let's just say the house is a rockin' and you don't want no one to come and knockin' and you don't want the door to fly and slide open on its own so they don't even need to come and knockin'. Well, you don't gotta worry about that. Obviously that door ain't doing anything. Now notice the, the you're still maintaining the blackout shades in here that you saw like uh, earlier in the, uh, the living room when I pulled all those shades shut. TV position in this, by the way, a little wonky. I suspect most people aren't worried about a bedroom TV, but the reason it's like that is because we have that extra wide sliding door. It slides almost all the way against that wall. So there's not really space for a TV uh, hookup in there. Now I realize I kind of shot myself in the foot. It's gonna be like, watch this as I open the cabinet and show you the storage, and this one's already open. But anyway, let's take a little tour of the bedroom storage here, shall we? Uh, one of the things that surprised me on this is that it does have those um, uh, like flip up and hold themselves up overhead doors, and you see the headboard side pockets. Your household and your USB uh, bedside outlets are both up in there, up in there, uh, as it were. And I realized, you know what, instead of telling you about the back side of the sliding door. I could just show you. There's not really, you know, enough wall space there. Here's an idea that I've had though. What do you think about this? What if somebody mounted a TV on that sliding door? That could be cool, right? That could work, right? I don't know. It just seems to me like it's a, it's just a big flat space that no one's really utilized. Maybe because those doors are mostly hollow. I'm, I'm not sure. Notice uh, we've got the uh, Under Armour door stops doing their job today. When you got, you know when I like climb on the high to beds and I got dirty black socks? This is why. Because uh, somebody said, Josh, you should walk around with a door stop in your pocket. First of all, genius. Secondly, <laughs> I want to go to Walmart and go digging change out of my pocket and have somebody like, is that a door stop? And I'll be like, yeah, what? You don't travel with a doorstop in your pocket? That's weird, anyway. Porcelain foot flush stool was a, uh, a nice find in here. In this class, this is a laminated class, so a lot of people naturally immediately just associate this as something that is somehow better, flashier, fancier as compared to a stick and tin camper. And there is certainly a, a correlation that, that you know would support that kind of uh, you know train of thought. But the fact is, um, this is still very price sensitive. So, uh, you know, finding porcelain things or like that extra bathroom window there, those are nice little features to find in this. Like, this is one of those things, eh, sure, maybe some brand X has one or two little widgets and whiz bangs that are really neat, but the daily use, feel, and function stuff, they really got that unlock in this thing. And of course, the slide closed road mode access. Unfortunately, we flat out lose the bedroom. When the slide's closed, you're gonna lose the bedroom. We basically maintain use of the kitchen, although without touching the slide button, you have very tight access to the fridge. You might be able to give the elf an enema arm reach to get up in there. By the way, when you're traveling, it is best advised to put that table down in transit just to keep it from jiggle banging all over the place. Little pro tip there for you from your Uncle Josh. Now we're standing in the doorway currently, so obviously, the bunks, the bathroom, those we can reach. And man, you know, I'm kind of sad we're not in some broad daylight because this RV looks a lot better than it looks on screen right now. It's like there's, it's the middle of the day and there's almost this haze in the air. Anyway, uh, what are we looking at? Let's talk towing. We are 30 foot, tip to tail, 
uh, tip of the tongue to back of the bumper. Kind of funny how a model number 23 RV is uh, 30 feet tip to tail, but unfortunately that seems to be one of those things the entire RV industry does that makes me rip out what's left of my hair, which isn't much. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but my forehead became a five head and it's working on becoming a six head very darn quickly. Uh, the RV as we see it today is just over 5,800 pounds. It has about a 7,500 pound GVW, meaning maximum weight after cargo. So about 1,700 pounds of cargo carrying capacity and the holding tank capacities actually don't suck on this it's got like what 49 fresh and then it has you're gonna read like 60 gray what the heck it's actually dual 30 gallon gray tanks you've got 30 for the kitchen 30 for the bathroom and then a 30 gallon uh black tank and you see here we've got one large pass through mother-in-law suite with a big baggage door on both sides slam latches magnet holdbacks all those nice little touches right there also power tongue jack uh doing the uh, heavy lifting for us when you're getting hooked up to your anti-sway and load leveling hitch uh that way you don't have to get tennis elbow manually cranking stuff power tongue jack's pretty cut yeah, sorry this is going to be one of my famous tangents I was watching some random sports ball the other day tennis and uh th this player had to uh, withdraw from, I think it was Wimbledon, because he got golf elbow playing tennis. Now, I don't know if you've put this together about me with my uh, peak male performance physique or whatever, but um, I'm not much of a sports baller. The fact is though, I'm trying to figure out how a guy got golf elbow playing tennis. Why isn't that called tennis elbow? Uh, 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 whatever. Anyway, I, I don't know. You saw the drunken uncle leash latch there. You can put the doggo uh, hooked up under the awning. We've got wide stance stability axles. I've mentioned those briefly a couple times, but what those are doing for us is they're, they're making the RV sway and bounce less in transit. Just better stability, um, and uh, the vehicle doesn't get pushed around. Very nice if you got like a short bed pickup. Now right here, I, I like this little camp kitchenette station. You got that slide open griddle. It slides away inside of that uh, galvanized rolled steel counter, and those outlets up there, I could see myself uh, using those just about any day of the week. Little pocket here, just extra little space beside the refrigerator, and Part of me feels like the refrigerator door opens the wrong way, but part of me feels like it opens the right way. The good news on pretty much any RV refrigerator, if you look up top, I don't know if you can see it, there's like three screws right there. The hinges can be flipped. You could flip the refrigerator door to open from right to left or ref, uh, left to right. The only thing it's not gonna do is open top to bottom or you know bottom to top, unless you flip it on its side, and I wouldn't uh, recommend that. <laughs> Um, you might notice too how all the windows are tinted. That's a nice little feature on these to help keep that sunshine down, especially uh, with the blackout roller shades that you have on the inside. You can really blot the sun out on this pretty darn well. Um, you also see how you have kind of like a, a centralized consolidated sewer and electrical hookup uh, there above the, uh, the bathroom black and gray. But this is that extra kind of uh, fair and clear detail stuff I like to give you. You have a bathroom black and gray in the back. We have a kitchen gray outlet in the front. I am very thankful at least that they didn't bury that uh, under the slide out where it could be a bit of a pain in the butt to get to if you're like on a uh, permanent sewer site. So it's it's easily accessible, but it is a two stage uh, you know sewer dump situation there. The underbelly of this, by the way, it is enclosed. It's forced air heated. Um, it also does have the uh, the holding tank heaters, uh, 12 volt on every one of the holding tanks. Now they are certainly not the only ones that make a floor plan like this. This is up in the wheelhouse of a 24 BH uh, J Feather and imagine 2400 BH, something like that. They all do it similar, but not identically. Maybe uh, an interesting cousin to this one might be the 23 DBH um, Arctic Wolf, uh, which is a similarly sized floor plan, just kind of rearranged a little bit differently. That is kind of the cool thing about having such a wide variety of RVs. We can really zero in on those things that work for you. So again, let me know what you like. Let me know what you would change. And heck, we might have an option that fits exactly what you're looking for sitting right next to this thing and you might not even know it. Uh, and of course, I'll leave you a link in the video description to check for pricing and availability. Uh, short of that, when you're ready, we're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.